fine for racism, but no jail time for now. Yesterday, Agritzi appeared in the Equality Court for using the K-word in a racist rant at his home that was recorded. The audio clip was played at the State Capture Commission. This on a charge of hate speech. But the more serious charge of crime and injuria, which could lead to jail time, was provisionally withdrawn by the prosecuting authority this week. Agritzi, of course, a key witness in the State Capture Inquiry. He's implicated politicians and his former Bosasa boss in corruption. When the tape was played at the inquiry, he admitted uh, to racism. Well, to discuss uh, the charges, we're joined by Gritzi's lawyer, Daniel Witt, uh, via Skype. And then we will speak to the Human Rights Commission that says it's very disappointed that the NPA is not pursuing the charge of criminal injuria for the moment. Uh, starting with you, Mr. Witt, uh, you have said that this is heading to an out-of-court settlement. Is, is 200,000 rand still the figure on the table? All right, thank you for having me on the show, and good evening to the listeners. At the moment, no settlement has been discussed, just the possibility of settlement with my colleague from the Human Rights Commission. We still have to hash out the terms of the settlement if there is going to be a settlement. And the Human Rights Commission also has to answer our request for further particulars regarding the transcript of the recording that was published and disseminated by unknown sources. And based on the evidence and discussions with our colleague, we'll see if a settlement can be reached. So 200,000 Rand has not been mentioned? It has been reported on? It was mentioned to the journalists outside of the Randberg Magistrates Court when they interviewed my colleague, um, but it hasn't been formally discussed. All right. It looks like Agritzi will avoid that crime and injuria charge for now. Is he very relieved? He will be relieved when both matters are resolved. At the moment, as you correctly said, it has been provisionally withdrawn. Um, the NPA still wants to investigate the source of the information, how the recording was taken, who disseminated the recording, and consider the entire transcript of the recording, not just the segment that is being dealt with in the criminal injuria matter and the Human Rights Commission matter. Is that the reasoning, because it's only um, an excerpt? Because we've seen other people, um, Adam, Adam Katsavelos, uh, Penny Sparrow, they, they're facing that crime and injuria charge. Does he think he could avoid it for, for long? I think the fact that our client, Mr. Greasy, did apologise at the Zondo Commission, both to Justice Zondo as well as the citizens of South Africa, not condoning any action, um, he, he is remorseful, and he does want to make amends. Um, however, the matter was the utterances were recorded without his permission. It was a secret recording, and we still need to find out how it was disseminated and who disseminated it. Mm. How, because the actual act reads that whoever disseminated it and published it should be charged. Does he not know, uh, because he was speaking to Gavin Watson's children, uh, there were only so many people in that room? Uh, is he not aware of how that came about, how it was recorded? He is aware of who took the recording after the recording was obviously taken, but we're not certain of how it was disseminated and published to journalists, social media, Twitter, Facebook, as yeah. well as at the Zondo Commission. D does that really matter for your case, uh, just out of interest in, in legal terms? I mean, the spy tapes were used in the Jacob Zuma matter, and, and, and that's gone all the way. It's, it's back in court again. Nobody's talking about who released those spy tapes to his lawyers. No, it doesn't matter for our case. As we said, the criminal injuria case has been withdrawn for the moment, and we focus in on the Human Rights Commission matter, and we are intending on reaching a settlement with my colleague from the Human Rights Commission. And any settlement that will hopefully be reached, we're looking to benefit the charity rather than punish anyone involved. Is Angela Gritzi, uh, however, prepared for crime and injury charges to come back? I guess it's up in the air at the moment. At the moment, it's up in the air, and we're dealing with whatever's in front of us at the moment. What happens now, uh, finally, uh, Mr. Witz? Uh, many believe that Angela Gritzi has been very honest and transparent because he wants immunity when the, the prosecutions come. We've seen changes at the National Prosecuting Authority. Are they in discussions with your clients yet? Are we going to see those prosecutions? We're not in discussions at the moment with the prosecution authority. Um, there has been a revamp there, as South Africa is aware. And when the time is right, we'll open discussions with them. But Mr. Greedy originally went to the Zondo Commission and drafted and 
affidavit, his affidavit gave his testimony not in the hope of getting immunity, but because he was tired of the corruption and he wanted to assist the state capture inquiry for a better South Africa. Is he still glad he did that? He doesn't regret anything he did in terms of um, testifying at the Zonda Commission. And he is very on board with the new dawn that our new president is talking about for South Africa. All right, thank you very much, Angela Aguzzi's lawyer, uh, Daniel Witt. And uh, let's speak now.